Right now, we're looking back 20 years, almost to the day, when New Mexico's Martha Bork rolled into Augusta, Georgia with a bullhorn, a few dozen friends, and a bone to pick with the leaders of the most exclusive golf club in the United States. Now, Martha Bork knew the male CEOs who were members of the Augusta National didn't pay women equally for the same work as men. So she fired up a protest to raise awareness, and she did it all for the world to see during Augusta's world-renowned event, the Masters Tournament. Now, this year's Masters is now halfway in the books. So executive producer Jeff Proctor sat down with Martha Burke to reflect on what's changed and what hasn't since her historic protest two decades ago. Martha, uh, it's really good to see you again, and thanks a ton for coming down to talk to me today. My pleasure. Okay. Um, it's Master's Week for those who celebrate, um, and it's also awfully close to the exact 20-year anniversary of you going down and making a big, nap, big mess in front of uh, uh, their little boys club. And we'll get to that in a minute, but um, if I recall correctly, this whole thing started with a letter that you wrote. To whom did you address the letter and what did it say? I addressed it to Hootie Johnson, who was head of the club, the Lord Master, you might say. <laughs> and it was a very polite, short letter. And it just said, uh, we've noticed that you have a very prominent club that attracts the CEOs of America's largest corporations and you don't allow women and we would like to encourage you to do that. It was a polite letter, probably about four lines long. I can't find a copy of it now. I didn't expect really to get an answer or I thought if I did, they'd say, oh sure, we're, stay tuned, we're working on it, something like that. I never expected it to explode as it did. Um, by then, we're talking about 20 years ago, I was already quite the golf tragic, but if I recall my history correctly, you hadn't really thought much about golf or golfers or golf clubs by that point. What was going on for you career-wise at that point, and how did Augusta National get on your radar? Oh, well, I was head of the National Council of Women's Organizations, which had membership ranging from Planned Parenthood to Church Women United, Black Women United for Action, American Nurses. We had about 50 groups representing collectively 10 million women. And our job was to advocate for women's equality. And we did stuff like go to the Hill all the time or harass the President of the United States occasionally uh, to get on certain bills like pay equity, childcare, the things that women need in order to achieve equality. And this was just such a minor little thing. I read somewhere in a magazine or a paper, you know, this club and it's a prominent club and they don't allow women. So I asked my board, we were packing up to leave. The meeting was over. And I said, oh, I heard about this golf club, blah, blah. Why don't we write them a letter? And they said, sure, write a letter. No vote, nothing. It, it just wasn't a big deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't think. <laughs> <laughs> so you weren't expecting much of a reaction at all. Not at all. What happened instead, Martha? Well, my phone rang, and this voice at the other end of the line said, hi, this is Doug Ferguson. I'm a golf writer for the AP. What did you think of... Uh, Augusta National's letter. And I said, what letter? And he read it to me, point of a bayonet, the whole screed. Mm -hmm. uh, and I said, oh, well, I got a FedEx about 10 minutes ago, but I, ha I hadn't had time to open it. I guess it's in there. And from there, as we know, it just exploded into a year long, or a little over a year, actually, uh, argument. <laughs> Tell me, please, about the protest itself. What was the vibe? What was the atmosphere? What was that day? We had a, about a 20-foot pink pig that we had uh, borrowed from Ralph Nader's organization because he always <laughs> said, you know, the corporations are pigs and that stuff. Uh, so we had that down there, and we were hoping to be at the club gates but local law enforcement wouldn't give us a permit. Well, you know whose pocket those boys were in. Shocker. Yeah, <laughs> so they put us about a half mile down the road. It was kind of muddy, uh, just an open field. Uh, the press reported we had 40 people. I think we probably had closer to 60 or maybe even 80. <laughs> but we didn't have as many people as we would have had at the gates. We didn't have any violence, even though, as I said in the, the piece, 
uh, I did have bodyguards and I did have a bulletproof vest. I had gotten a lot of death threats. Some people take golf much more seriously than they ever should. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Um, what happened afterwards? What was the private response that you got? I remember the I stand with Hootie t-shirts and the little Ghostbusters buttons with your face in the middle of it. Um, what, what, what was the response privately? How did the public respond to what well, you were doing? Well, most of the women were for us. A few weren't. My husband plays golf and I don't want to play, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, the, shall I say, the progressive community knew exactly what it was about and it was never about golf. It was about equal opportunity to the business deals that were made on that course and in that clubhouse. And I mean, the Fortune 500 was a membership. Uh, you, could, you can't just go put your money down and get a membership to that club. You have to be invited and they didn't invite anybody but the highest levels of corporate America or occasionally, I suppose, some uh, prominent preacher or something like that, but there were no normal people, so to speak. And women were trying to uh, get equal footing in the halls of big business and that's where off-campus deals were made. And so that's what it was about. I wanna talk some about the value of protest itself and the value of direct action. Why did you choose to go the route that you did and to have that day in front of all those cameras and a big pink pig and all of that stuff? And how do you think it impacted what it is you were trying to do? Well, I think it made a difference. They waited eight years to let a woman in so we wouldn't get credit, but we did. I mean, people remembered and, you know, they knew what happened. Uh, but the value of protest is to raise public consciousness. We wouldn't have protested had they not provoked us with this letter they sent that said we won't be held at the point of a bayonet by a women's group of all people. I mean, my God, to let women tell you what to do? No. Uh, but the value of protest is real. Uh, we would not have the civil rights movement, if we did, uh, civil rights laws, if we didn't have protests. We wouldn't have what's now very controversial, but uh, the LBGTQ community is under siege, but protest will turn the tide eventually. Uh, you have to get out there because asking politely to bigots is never going to make social change. I want to flash us forward to today. Um, given the current political climate in this country now, should protest and direct action like that still be on the activist's menu? Yes and no. I think it should be because I think, again, it's vital to democracy. What has changed is the gun culture. And as I said, I had a bulletproof vest way back then, but we didn't have AK-47s on every street corner. And we do now, and it, so people who protest on either side are uh, under a much larger threat than what we would call a peaceful protest. You know, my grandchild asked me fairly recently what I was doing back in the day. Uh, he said the 60s, 70s. I said, I was protesting the Vietnam War. And we did it, and it was peaceful protest. You know, you never would have carried a gun in the street and, and threatened to kill people. You wanted to change their minds. You didn't want to eliminate them. And that's what's changed, I think. And speaking of change, a lot has changed at Augusta National in the 20 years since you've done this. They have admitted a few women members. Mm -hmm. We're not exactly sure because of their secrecy policies as to how many. They now stage a big uh, women's amateur golf tournament there. Um, and there has been some progress. I was listening to a master's preview podcast this morning and dare I say, they use the word progressive to des describe Augusta in, in, in the golf space at least, which of course is an incredibly low bar. Um, incredibly low. I, I wanna ask beyond that, given that this was never about golf for you, what has changed and what has not in pay equity and the other women's struggles that you've dedicated so much of your life to? Well, this is what's kind of pathetic, Jeff. Uh, let's take pay equity since you mentioned it. Back then, the gap between women and men's pay was so something around 
cents on the dollar. Women made 78 cents to, and the white man's dollar was the standard. Um, now it's 82 cents. That's four cents in 20 years. So maybe in the next century, uh, at the rate we're going, we need better laws. We need a lot of things to give women an equal playing field. Let's take COVID, for example, just a little digression here. Who lost their jobs during COVID? Women, why? Because they made less than men in a two-parent family and the lower earner needed to quit to stay home with kids because we don't have childcare in this country, unlike all of Europe and most of the civilized world. So we're making progress, but it is much too slow. Martha, do you have any plans this weekend? What do you think would happen if we went down to Augusta and decided we wanted to go to the golf tournament? Oh, I think the boys would put on a really good show. I bet they would welcome us and say, see, see what we've done? Look at our six women <laughs> out of 300 uh, members. You know, that they're, they're secretive, but we, we're pretty sure it's about six. That's 2% of the membership. Uh, but I think they, they would have a different tone, a great patina, you know, and behind that tissue paper equality, uh, they're still doing the same thing. Well, maybe next year we'll do that. Thank you so much for coming down and talking to me today. You're most welcome. My pleasure.